kid and you're asking like, what do we do about is you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you more than 30 years i got my real estate license in the um, and your your origin story is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna use that kuka you know I, i'm a little more strict with what i'm i'm looking at uh
add something, because about six months ago, I was approached by a venture capital group, because I've been doing this business for a while. They, just what he said, they had $20 million, they only wanted to invest $20 million in each project. Anything under that, they were not interested. Can you imagine that? Somebody comes to you and say, I'll give you 20 million, so you need to give me a 20 million dollar project. If it's under 20 million, I'm not interested. And it's, it's real. And if you all are not taking this information today, what well, Rick has brought here to the table, and I'm so happy to have these two by me. <laughs> but if, if the information that Rick has brought to you, and for people of color, he's talking about high level, we're talking high level stuff. Tommy brought in the syndication, and, and I'm teaching my folks how about syndication for non accredited and credit investors. I mean, people, we don't talk this language in our community. So you have to take this information today and share. This is education, please. This is worth, you go to these conferences, they charge you 10, 15, 20, 30,000 to learn this. Today, we're sitting in these seats for these sponsors that have given you an opportunity. If you're not taking this and saying, I walked away and I didn't learn anything, then I don't know what it is going to wake you up today. That's the only thing I have to say. I don't tell you, you're wrong with boss. I don't Just so that I can network with the people. Uh, 
Uh, I belong to the Realtors, National Association of Real Estate Brokers, and I go to their conventions and network with them, and they have accelerated my success because the people who say I want to do something, they actually do it and they hold you accountable to it. So being in a room like this with other people who are succeeding and learning from them helps a lot. And I don't watch TV. <laughs> Um, the one thing I would add is just get comfortable with your fear of failure. Um, one of the things that you're going to have in this business is you're going to try some things that aren't going to work. Uh, and it may not have to do with anything you've done wrong. It could just be, the, as someone mentioned earlier, the market changes on you. Right? And so you just have to get comfortable with uh, your fear of failure. Um, and just realize that everybody who does this business fails at it from, and learns from it. And so once you get comfortable with that, now you can go off and you're willing to try new things, do new things, because that's where the opportunities are. So, you know, you, when you're in this business, I would say you have to still educate yourself. Because some people say, well, I'm in the business, I don't need to know anything. Trust me, I learned from my 25 year old son who does nothing but mass taxes and gets deals from mass taxes and never sees the properties and make $100,000 a month in wholesaling. And he's 25 years old. So for me, I'm like, okay, why not learn from anybody, right? Learn from everybody. I mean, I've been invested in title company. We had a restaurant. I've done, I'm, I have a contracting company now, so the pastor was talking about the contracting pass. I have invested in the contracting company, so he can't fail because I'm part of that business now. You know, when you're in this business, learn it, educate yourself. But one thing I teach, and I'm, when I mentor the people, I said, every day is a new day. So I hit the reset button every day, even if, for me. If I fail yet tomorrow or yesterday, today is a new day I start over again. So just because you failed yesterday doesn't mean you can't start a new day today. So just remember that. Every day is a new day. So if it didn't work yesterday, try something different to make it work today. So just remember, hit the reset button. Help one of my 
clients for something, and they told me they don't work on weekends. And I said, you don't what? I said, that's where you get most of your business. So I tell people, it depends on how hungry you are. If you've got to feed your family, then you're hungry. If you've got a grandmother who's sick at home that needs to pay for medication, then you're hungry. If you're homeless, you're hungry. So it depends on what your why is that's going to make you make this business work for you, right? It all depends on that. If you're just saying, oh, I just want to get a deal so I can go on vacation, and then you sit home next month, and then the check don't come in, what about that electric bill? What about that cable bill you got to pay? Because you got to keep the cable and the electric on so you can get on the internet, right? So you really got to know what your why is. And if that why is good, and that why for you makes sense, my why now is my legacy what I leave for my children, what I leave for the grandchildren. That's my, that's my why. In the beginning, my why was, oh, let me make this money, let me go on vacation, let me have a good time. We used to have parties with 500 people every year at our house. Free food, free liquor, bands, DJs. That's not my why anymore, because I didn't know. I liked the money coming in, but I didn't know, right? But now that I know, my why is different. So you gotta determine what your why is for you to make it in this business. And the people will come. So this is my 30th year as a real estate broker. And when I first started in 94, it was the MLS book and the DOS computer as well. And I was kind of laid back and not so hungry because my grandmother or my My grandmother passed and my husband couldn't watch the kids because of his job. I had to put my son in daycare. And my husband told me, uh, you the one who chose to work. I'm paying the bills, you don't have to work. But since you choose to work, you're gonna pay for that daycare. So I had to grind. I really had to grind so I could pay for the daycare because he said he was not going to. Now sometimes I had to take the kids with me to show a house or I might have to um, take them over to my mom's house for a minute. But you're, you have to look at it in perspective. You are a farmer. You plant seeds, and you nurture them, then you can harvest them. And it's not a jack and a beanstalk where you just bam and then it grow. You really have to nurture those seeds. You have to reach out and build a database and contact them regularly, not just because you want to ask them to buy or sell a house with you, but just because you want to see, hey, did your teenager graduate this year, this June? Or hey, you know, I want to invite you to this open house. I know you don't, you're not looking for a house, but let me invite you. Just got to talk to them, reach out and nurture those relationships so that when they are ready to buy, that they'll come to you and they'll remember you because you didn't just, it's like if you had some Girl Scout cookies, everybody just buy cookies and go, right? But we have an inventory that we don't even have to store. All we have to do is have access to the MLS and then if you don't have an appointment where you're showing a house or um, measuring a house, then you should be doing research and development. That means studying the market, analyzing the market, looking at the trends. And then when you bump into somebody and say, how you doing? Oh, it's hot out here. No, this is what's going on. We have five listings that popped up today. We have four closures today. I got the legal news today. So when somebody asks you how you doing, tell them what you've been studying. If you haven't been showing any houses, tell them what you've been learning them. Because before my grandmother passed, I didn't even go into the office unless it was a meeting or I had a floor. Y'all know what floor to me is, right? You have to be there and answer the phone. So, but once I realized I had to make some money, I was just there. Now I'm there all day, right? And I'm learning and I'm watching the other people and I'm, oh, I need to get my notary license too, right? Oh, I need to do this like them. I need to have that little measuring device that go on the wall and bounce back. You know, so once you get involved and immerse yourself in it and hang out with those people who talk like you and walk like you, you'll be there. Tanisha said what I was going to tell you. You got to put yourself in the room. You got to come outside of your comfort box and you got to get uncomfortable. You need to be around people that are on a much higher level than you, and those are the ones that you want to learn from. Those are the ones that you want, that they challenge you. 
So you, you gotta search every free event. You know, you have dues and other things too. So you may not be able to pay for some of those 499s or 395 events. But events like this, this should be a packed room, a free event. Show up. to pick a market that you're going to be good at, right? 
you're gonna do fix and flip, and as Damien said, understand your market, be great at that. But realize that there's either going to be a location where your city's down, there's another city that's going up. If people are moving out of Detroit, they're moving somewhere else. Right? Where are you moving to? Right? So that's so that's one answer. The other answer is that if you take something like the pandemic, which was a huge what we call black swan event, right? There were there was really kind of six traditional real estate markets. There was your residential market, there's your multifamily market, there's your um, kind of commercial uh, like shopping center type market. You got office, you got warehouse, and um, That's and, and what? Retail. And retail, right? So what happened was during the pandemic, before the pandemic, all those markets were great. Right? And hospitality, that was one of those things. Right? But what happened is when the pandemic happened, uh, all those markets where the just in the markets was you would leave the house and go somewhere else, a shopping center, an office building, a hotel, right? Those markets were down. Yeah. What markets were up? The markets where you're gonna stay at home. That's your single family house, that's your apartment, and that's your warehouse facility, right? Because now you're not shopping. All that goods and services, they didn't go away, they just moved from the mall to an Amazon warehouse. Yeah. You still take the same residential, I mean, same real estate space. So I say that to say that if you can understand multiple markets within real estate, it allows you, as you see things start to shift, because there's always going to be a cycle in every real estate market. And if you understand multiple markets, you now can flip when you see the cycle being ready to turn. Right, right. And I'll piggyback a little bit on that because I'm on a plane every other week in, in, in different cities with real estate deals. So, I, and I call it, as long as I have a person, I call boots on the ground, as long as I go to these events and network and meet people, I buy real estate. I have uh, projects in Minneapolis, uh, projects in D.C., North Carolina, other places too, Virginia. Um, and those are places I have people boots on the ground. And it is a good market. If I could take 2008 and turn it back around, I would have never sold anything. I would have kept everything. So the lesson is to learn is now you know you're going to keep it. Because if it doesn't work for flipping and fixing, you can put someone in it, right? The rental market is is a hot market. You can put somebody in it, do a lease option, sell your notes. I mean, you got so many options in this market. You got a lot of office buildings that are vacant. Guess what's happening? We're converting those into condos and putting retail space at the bottom. You got to be creative in this business. For those new investors, understand the market, yes. You know, when you get in there. For the experienced investors, if you're not making money, there's a reason that you're not, it's you. Rick put on there about me writing grants. We, I haven't even touched the surface with y'all today about how to get grant funds. And Ms. Geneva, um, Dr. Geneva, I want to be her when I grow up one day. But I, I do do grants for universities and build buildings and stuff. I do real estate development along with the grants. And I'm saying to you, experienced investors, that grants will drive your business to another level and be respected in this business where people are going to be wanting and knocking your doors down as a real estate investor and developer if you understand how to get grants to fund your deals. So that's where we leave you. And I'll piggyback on that. I think it's a great time to invest. Um, you know, it's all about the opportunity. It's all about the value you're able to get today. Um, building in a rental hedge is also very good um, in case you know there is some contraction in the market. But uh, from our perspective, you know we're looking for good investors, good contractors that are looking to scale, accelerate, and you know any deals. Um, you know we can do deals up to 50 million. So I see Tommy back there. <laughs> so I think we can we can look at some different things, but um, I would say give us a call, contact us, and we'll start walking through some deals and figure out how to get you guys accelerated. Thank you so 
much. I know we have to kind of move this along, but I, that type of topic, I could just go on and on with the questions. I know we have a few more out there. If you're going to be able to answer them, I mean, ask them. You can just go directly to them in a hot second here. As Augustino is coming up, we're going to thank our panel for being able to share. <laughs> And then it allows you to be able to go and speak back with them and go further with that relationship. So with that being said, we're going to have Augustino come up as these uh, fine people shift downward. And thank you all for giving us another round of applause. And we're going to give you a and you're asking, like, what do we do about is you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the um, And your your origin story. That he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh,